Hello and welcome to Tall Guy Films. Today we're going to do a quick video on how to read scopes and how to do basic color correction. New, interesting, random, tall guy films. So this is going to be kind of a lead up series or lead up video to a series that I'm going to do, which will probably the first episode will come out later this week. But for now, basically this is going to be an intro and kind of a teaser for that. So we're going to be talking about how to read scopes in uh, color grading programs, and then how to take that information and utilize that to properly color correct an image. We're not going to be doing any like creative grading or anything like that. This is just going to be a super basic intro into how to make an image look correct, if there's anything wrong with it. So we're going to do this in three different programs. We're going to do this in DaVinci Resolve, which is a really popular free color grading program. We're going to do this using the Lumetri tools inside Premiere Pro, and then with the Magic Bullet Looks um, plugin. And the only reason to do it is with those three different applications is because the scopes often look different between different applications, and some of the controls are a little different, so I want to give you a little bit of a variety of different programs that you can look at. That way, if you go into a new program, you'll kind of know what to look for when it comes to looking for the basic correction tools. So we're going to start out right here in DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing you notice is that I've got two scopes up right here. There are a ton of different scopes, and I'm going to talk about one more scope when we go into Magic Bullet Looks. But to start out with, we're just going to look at these two different scopes, because I think these are the two most important and most common scopes. So the first one that you'll see right here on the left is the RGB Parade. And on the left, or on the right over here, we have the vector scope. So the RGB parade is going to give us information about color balance and about luminance. And then our vector scope is going to give us information about color balance and saturation. So to start out with, let's talk about how the parade works. So as you can see, the parade is representing this image right here. Now, as you can see, this image is pretty flat. It's not super contrasty. It's pretty boring looking and it's shifted a little bit red. Now, to see this represented in the scope, we can see right here. Now, the brightest part of the image is this top right here, and the darkest part of the image is down here. You can see where the very bottom of these lines touch. Now, the maximum and minimum brightness are these bottom and top lines right here. So, if I were to take, uh, say, these lift controls... Hold on, I'm gonna add another node. If I were to take these lift controls down, as you can see, it's starting to get very, very dark. And as you can see on here, these um, lines are starting to move below the zero, which means that all of the information below the zero is now lost. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and reset that. And if we were to do the same thing with the gain controls, bring that all the way up, you would see that all the stuff back here is starting to get washed out. And we can see that in here with all of this information is going above this top line, which means it's getting lost. So that's effectively how the parade works. Also, if, to look at the color balance, this image is balanced pretty well, um, but generally each of these red, green, and blue channels you would want to be exactly the same. So for example, if I were to do something crazy like this, now you can see the image is very blue, but you can also see on here the difference between the blue and the red channels which tells us in the scopes that the image is balanced off. And so if I were to see this image, I would know to push the image towards red, which would balance it out. So that is how the parade works. Now the vector scope is pretty simple. As you can see, we've got red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow markers right here. So as you can see, the image is shifted slightly towards red, which as I mentioned, there's quite a bit of red in the scene. These shirts, a lot of this concrete stuff in the background is red. So it's showing us that the image is a little more red. Now, the further out from the center this little streak is, the more saturated the image is. So if I were to pump up the saturation a whole ridiculous amount, so now you can see the image is oversaturated, down here this scope is going to be bigger. Now if we were to bring it back to the default amount, it gets smaller again. So again, this vector scope, the bigger this part is, the more stretched it is towards the outside, the more saturated the image is. 
And there are several other scopes that are available. Um, we also have the histogram and the waveform here in Resolve, but many other programs have other tools. But if you want to learn more about how those work, there's plenty of information online. So now that we've got a basic understanding of how scopes work, <clears throat> let's talk about how to use those to correct the image. Now correcting the image usually goes in two parts, correcting the luminance and then correcting the color. Now people have different preferences for which order to do things, but I prefer to correct the luminance first. So as you can see down here, we've got four controls, lift, gamma, gain, and offset. Now to talk about these in simpler terms, effectively the lift is the low end, the gamma is the mid-tones, and the gain is the high end, and the offset controls basically everything. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that, and there is some good information you can find online talking about what exactly each of those controls does to the image. Um, some of them are additive, multiplicative, uh, exponential, but we're not going to worry about that. Basically, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to assume offset controls everything, gain is the high tones, gamma is the mid tones, and lift is the shadows. So in order to have a properly balanced image luminance-wise, we want the very tops of the image to be touching the tops of our parade, and the same for the bottom. So to do that, what we can do is we can bring up the gain so that the very tops of the image are just barely touching there. That way we're not losing any information, but we're getting the brightest parts of the image as bright as possible. Now we do the same for the lift. And as you can see, if I go toggle that on and off, you can see that the image looks much, much more contrasty and a lot more balanced. Now it does look a little dark, so what I can do is take the gamma or the midtones and raise those up a little bit. So overall, the image looks very, very balanced. We're utilizing the full dynamic range that we have in the image, which is good. Now for some looks, you might not want to do that if you're doing creative type grading, but for correction, you want to have everything basically as stretched out as it can be. Now, if we were to look here, you would see that our red doesn't quite go down all the way, and then our blue doesn't go quite up all the way. So we can actually correct that, and that's the color balancing part. So if I add another node for our color balance here, our lift, which controls our low end, we can put a little more blue in that, it's kind of a touchy thing to do. You have to be really careful. Otherwise, the image will end up looking very bad. But you can see if we add just a tiny bit of blue, maybe even less than that, you can see the image looks a little less red and a little more balanced. Now if we do the same thing on the top end with our gain controls, we just bring in a little bit more blue and maybe even on the gamma take out a little bit of green. You have to, again, you want to make very, very small adjustments. It's very, very careful. You have to be very careful. So if we disable that, you can see here, everything looks a little bit orange, but if we switch it, it's a little bit more balanced. I would say that this is slightly more blue, um, but overall with the image, it's properly corrected, so you want to be careful again. Um, I can't stress enough the importance of being careful when you're correcting, but overall I would say that this is slightly better, but maybe a little bit too far on the other end. So we can actually go into our log, which gives us a little bit finer controls, and just very, very slightly do the same thing. Now, as you can see, in the log controls, they're labeled shadow, midtones, highlight, and then again our offset. Um, but these log controls and resolve are a little bit more fine-tuned. As you can see, the adjustments I'm making aren't nearly as significant as they were. So if we go back and see, there, that image is a lot more balanced. Maybe even put a little more red in the midtones. There we go. There, so that's, that's a balanced image. And this is a process, and I could spend quite a bit more time um, going back and forth, you want to look at the scope and look at the image just to double check everything. Um, but you want to be, you want to spend a lot of time when you're correcting because it is a very delicate process. So now if we add another node, 
we can adjust our saturation. Now the saturation is pretty good. We might bring it up just a tad, but overall the saturation looks pretty good in this image. So anyway, that's how you do basic corrections inside of Resolve. So now let's jump over into Premiere Pro and look at Lumetri and see how we can do effectively the same thing with Lumetri Color. All right, so now we've got an image pulled up in Premiere Pro. And as you can see, I've got my Lumetri scopes pulled up right here and then my image right here. So we're gonna do effectively the same thing that we did in Resolve, except we're gonna do it with the Lumetri tools. So if we go ahead and we go in here, Lumetri color, and open up our correction tab. Now I apologize, I do have these on separate monitors, so I'm gonna be switching back and forth. Hope you don't mind. But anyway, as you can see, if I pull it up, we've got our controls for highlights, shadows, um, overall exposure, and then temperature and tint. So this is a little bit different. Now let's go back over to our image and our scopes. Now if we look at the scopes, we can see the image is not very bright because again, here on the RGB parade, this is our brightest point, this is our darkest point. So it's a little bit darker and not really utilizing the contrast. Overall, the color balance is pretty good. It might be tinted a little bit blue, we can see right here, but overall color balance is pretty good. So let's go ahead and um, correct our luminance. Also, as you can see, we've got a vector scope down here. It looks a little bit different, but it's the same thing. So RGB parade, vector scope, oh, it's all fancy. So over in the Lumetri tools, I'm going to be, I'll show you real quick, I'm gonna be using the highlight and shadow controls to do what I did with the gain, lift, all those controls in Resolve. So I can bring up my highlights quite a bit. There we go. Um, let's... There we go. So brought it up quite a bit. And then we can bring our blacks down right there. So there we already see our image is basically stretched out using as much of the dynamic range as we can. Maybe even bring it up a little more. Uh, these controls are a lot harder to use. Than, okay, so yeah, so we're utilizing a lot more of the dynamic range so you can see the whites look a lot brighter. Uh, we also have a little bit more contrast because the dark areas, particularly in the fence right here and in some of the houses, like the bricks and these shadows, those are a lot darker now. So again, we're utilizing that full dynamic range in the image as much as possible so that way the whole image stands out as much as possible. Now to do the color corrections, we actually are going to use the temperature and the tint settings right here. Now the temperature will control between red and blue, and our tint will control between green and purple. So as you can see, if I were to pump up the tint right here, if you were to look, see the tint settings are changing that purple and that green, and then our temperature settings are changing that green and that blue. So overall, it's doing exactly the same thing as our color wheels in Resolve. The only difference is that they're labeled slightly differently. So if we were, because this looks a little bit too blue, I'm going to bring out just a little bit of, oops, wrong way, maybe a little bit too much. Eh, even there, it's still, all right, that looks, that looks a lot better. So if we were to adjust that, you can see it, with this image, it's a little bit blue, but once we apply that, it's now a lot more balanced and our whites look a lot more white, which is what they should look like. So overall, I would say this image is properly balanced. Now we could, if we wanted to, pump up the saturation a little bit. Looking at our vector scope, saturation looks pretty good. Um, and overall, there's not a lot of color in the image anyway, so if we were to pump up the saturation, that might make it look a little too saturated. But anyway, let's pump it up and just see what happens. So if we pump it up to about... Oh, right there. As you can see, the image looks quite a bit brighter and more colorful. 
I wouldn't say it's over colorful at this point, but again, you have to keep in mind there aren't a lot of bright colors in this image to begin with. So to try and force a lot of saturation into this image would not be a very good idea. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this very same image, but inside of Magic Bullet Looks. And this will be our last look um, with this image. But it's just a way to, an alternate way to look at things. So let's go ahead and bring this over here, actually. All right, so here we are. So there's, I mentioned there was one more thing that I wanted to talk about, one more scope. And that is a scope that Magic Bullet Looks has. And you can see right here, it's called Memory Colors. Now, Memory Colors scope is probably my favorite scope out of the main four, the RGB Parade, our vector scope right here, and then the histogram and the waveform. What Memory Colors does is it looks for certain colors that we associate for certain things. So for example, it looks for green, blue, and red, and those are important because, for example, the sky, we want the sky to be blue. So if we, now this day is cloudy, but if this was a clear day and we had some blue up here, we could see that and make sure that it was the proper color of blue. The same with the grass, again the grass is dead here, but if we had real grass, or a live grass, we would see that green showing up, and that would tell us that our grass was the right color. And then it also shows us skin tones. Now skin tones, all skin is the same color. Now black people, white people, Asian people, they have different levels, they have different um, brightness essentially. Um, so some people's skin is brighter, but it's all the same color. So we can use our memory color scope to make sure that everyone's skin is the same color. And again, that works for all races because everyone's skin is the same color, unless you're sunburned. So anyway, we're gonna pull up a tool right here called Colorista. Now Colorista, you can use outside of this Magic Bullet Looks plugin, you can use it just as a standalone plugin. Um, but Colorista is what we're going to use to go ahead and balance out our image. Now again, we can see the same thing that we saw earlier on our RGB Parade. So we can bring down our shadows with this control right here. Bring up our highlights. Now one thing to quickly note right here is that this vector scope, you can see the one right here and this line and that little triangle pointing out that line. This line is our maximum brightness value. Now it goes above that, so you can see if we were to pump up above that, this image looks washed out now, but this lets us see what exists above the brightest point. And if you're working in an HDR workflow, that's high dynamic range, you would actually be able to utilize this additional space up here. But since we're just working in a traditional workflow, we're stuck in this smaller box, essentially. Now we can use Colorista the same way we used DaVinci Resolve to correct the image that is just dragging these wheels to adjust. And there we can see our color image is much, much more balanced. Now another tool you can use to do this is the four-way color. The four-way color also works very similarly um, because we also have a master in addition to our shadow, midtone, and highlight controls. And we also have individual saturation controls. So I would say the four-way color or colorista are both the best tools to do color correction with. Um, if you want to pump up the saturation at all, um, like we can do right here, boom, we got a much, much more saturated image now. Um, colorista doesn't have saturation controls, so it's a little bit harder, although it does have HSL. Now, HSL is for a little bit more advanced type grading, but it basically allows you to just control where the colors are, and that has more to do with what I was talking about with memory colors. So there's not a lot of blue in the image, but if we were to, say, change this red, you could see a little bit of the stuff changing. But we're not going to worry about that for now, we're just going to worry about our color balance and our luminance. So that is basic correction. That is how, if you have an image, you color correct it. Now we're going to utilize this information our information that we learned today in terms of looking at scopes, in terms of balancing color, and we're going to utilize that for some future videos on color grading. 
So if you like this video, hit the like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments about this upcoming series, feel free to leave those down below. And if you want to see more videos, including the upcoming series that I've been repeatedly mentioning in this video, please hit that subscribe button. Just going to be a rundown about all of the hardware that I use here. So to start out with, my desktop computer is a originally a Dell XPS 8700. It's running an i7-4790 processor. It originally had 8GB of RAM and a GT720 uh, GPU, as well as a 1TB 